Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we'll be covering topic 5.12, which is sustainability. So sustainability has become somewhat of an environmental buzzword these days. A lot of people like to call their products sustainable or talk about sustainable design. But today we'll cover what sustainability actually means from an AP environmental science standpoint, and we'll discuss how do we know if we're achieving sustainability on a global scale. So our objective today is to be able to explain the concept of sustainability, and we need to know that sustainability is more or less humans living on Earth in a way that doesn't deplete resources for future generations. We'll look at five different environmental indicators which can help us understand if we are or are not living sustainably. And then finally, we'll look at a concept called maximum sustainable yield. And our suggested science skill for the day is to explain what data illustrate about an environmental issue. So sustainability is the idea of using a resource or a space in a way that doesn't degrade it for future generations. So an example of that would be using compost instead of synthetic fertilizer. Compost is just dead, broken down organic matter, which is renewable. We can have plants that will continually grow. We can take our food scraps and use those to create fertilizer. Whereas synthetic fertilizer has to be produced using fossil fuel inputs. So it's not sustainable we're gonna run out of fossil fuels at some point. And so using synthetic fertilizers is not sustainable. Maximum sustainable yield is the idea that if you want to use a renewable resource, it should be done at a rate that is not greater than the resource can replenish itself. So if you harvest a renewable resource at about 50% of its regeneration rate or 50% of its carrying capacity, if we're talking about a living organism, that's going to allow you to maximize your harvest or your yield, how much you take from the resource. It's also going to maximize the regeneration rate or the regrowth period. So if we look at this example here, if we're going to harvest a population of trees and we're going to take it all the way down here to the very bottom of its population size, one, its growth is going to be very slow, but two, we may cause population collapse. If we harvest the resource up here, well, then we're not taking very much of it. So we're probably not going to be profitable. And we're also going to experience really slow regrowth. If we harvest it at about 50% of its carrying capacity, we're not going to threaten its future use. We're not going to deplete it. And it's also going to regrow at a really fast rate because we're harvesting it at about 50% of its carrying capacity where growth rate is naturally quite high. Environmental indicator is something that we use to assess the health of ecosystems and to assess whether or not we're living sustainably. So we can look at these factors and they can give us a strong clue as to whether or not the way that we're living on Earth is sustainable. The first one is biodiversity. So this refers to genetic, species, and ecosystem biodiversity. Now, higher biodiversity is going to be indicative of a healthier ecosystem. Remember that genetic diversity makes populations more resilient and resistant to disruption. Species diversity gives more roles to an ecosystem. It makes it more complex and inter connected food web, and then ecosystem biodiversity just provides a wide array of habitats for organisms. Now, declining biodiversity can indicate pollution, habitat destruction, and climate change. So declining biodiversity is an indicator that our actions on Earth are not sustainable. And so global extinction rate is one of the strongest environmental indicators when it comes to biodiversity. And what we can see here, if we look at this graph, is that compared to the background extinction rate, which is the extinction rate we would expect just normally based on a stable climate and the rate of species going extinct naturally, we are far exceeding those extinction rates right now for pretty much every group of organisms that we measure. So again, this is an indicator that human activity on Earth is not sustainable from the standpoint of biodiversity. We're causing extinction of species far faster than it would be expected to occur naturally. Food production is another environmental indicator of sustainability. So food production refers to the Earth's ability to support agriculture from the standpoint of its soil, its water resources, and its climate. Climate is a huge threat to food production. So climate change can threaten food production, soil degradation, such as desertification or topsoil erosion, and also depletion of groundwater. All of those factors threaten our ability to continue producing food on Earth. So let's look at a projected impact of climate change. We can see that a huge portion of the world, especially around the equator, you know, huge parts of Africa and South America, parts of the United States, are all projected to have declines in agricultural yield as climate change advances. That's because this area of the earth is going to warm considerably, that can dry out soil and make it less suitable for agriculture. 
Another factor that really threatens our global food production is meat consumption. We know meat consumption is very inefficient compared to plant consumption. And so increasing meat consumption puts a strain on our land, our soil, and our water, since it takes so much more land and water to produce equivalent amounts of meat as it does grains. And so another concerning factor is that our grain production globally is starting to level off and potentially even show signs of decline. So we look at this graph here, this is the production of grain on earth on a per person basis. So meaning how much grain is produced divided by the total number of people on earth. And so you can see it peaked in the late 80s and it's starting to actually decline now. And so that's a really big concern because a huge portion of the world's population, I think something like 2 billion people rely on rice for the majority of their calories. And that's one of our staple grains globally. So as we see declining food production, that's an environmental indicator that we're not using our soils and our water sources sustainably. And our climate may be changing in a way that's not sustainable for agriculture. Maybe the most critical and immediate environmental indicator is global temperature and carbon dioxide. This is because life depends on a very narrow range of temperature on Earth, and we know that carbon dioxide acts as a greenhouse gas. That means that it traps infrared radiation in Earth's atmosphere and heats up the planet. So if we look at this diagram here, solar energy comes in in the form of light rays. Those light rays strike Earth's surface, and Earth's surface gives off infrared radiation, which is the red arrows here. That infrared radiation, which is heat, is trapped by this blue layer of heat trapping gases, which we call greenhouse gases around the earth. And carbon dioxide is the most prominent greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. So some of the heat might escape, but a lot of it's being trapped. And the thicker that this blanket of greenhouse gases becomes, the more earth's temperature will increase. We know that because we have data historically that show that as carbon dioxide levels rise, so do global temperatures. So we see a really strong link between increased atmospheric CO2 and increased temperature on Earth. What causes that? Deforestation is a huge cause. We lose the future carbon sequestration of those trees, so they're not going to continue to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Their decomposition is going to contribute carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And then the combustion of fossil fuels. So when we burn gasoline, when we burn coal to create electricity, we emit CO2 into the atmosphere. That increases atmospheric CO2, and that increases global temperature. Why is this a problem? Well, it's not sustainable to live on an earth that's rapidly increasing carbon dioxide and rapidly increasing atmospheric temperature. Why? Because it dries out agricultural land. It can deplete further our groundwater sources as we're having to overdraw from those to support agriculture. It destroys habitats. So it's going to eliminate biodiversity, which we depend on for a whole host of benefits. And it's also going to worsen storm intensity. So we're going to see increased heat waves, increased hurricane strength, increased drought severity. And all of those things are unsustainable to the way that we currently live on Earth. And finally, we have human population growth and resource depletion. So as the human population grows, we experience resource depletion because more people demand more resources. And so we can see here human population has just absolutely exploded in the past couple hundred years. Um, it's a really, really, really extreme example of exponential growth. We're growing far beyond any reasonable logistic growth model that we see in nature. And so this population growth is just unprecedented. Now, well, the problem is this leads to us harvesting resources at an unsustainable rate. We're harvesting resources at a rate that's far faster than they can be replenished by natural ecosystem function. This is going to degrade those ecosystems. Let's look at some examples. As the human population grows, we have more paper demands and more lumber demands. That leads to deforestation. We're also going to have increased food production. So as we have a larger population, we have to produce a lot more food. And that leads us to clear forested area, which leads to deforestation. It's going to lead to topsoil erosion as we're using more and more monoculture. We're going to deplete groundwater resources as we're irrigating our crops more and more. And then travel is another one. As people become more affluent, they travel more. That's going to lead to the mining of fossil fuels, which beyond emitting carbon dioxide in the atmosphere also leads to land degradation, habitat destruction to actually get to those natural resources. So this is a really big problem. We can look at an example here. We can see that as the human population is rising from 1800 to 2010, we're also seeing substantial rates of deforestation occurring. So as the human population increases, the amount of resources that it uses increase. 
And the problem is we're harvesting those resources at a rate far faster than they can replenish themselves. That leads to resource depletion. So our suggested science skill for practice FRQ 5.12 today is to explain what data imply or illustrate about an environmental concept. So I want you to look at this table here that has five different students and their ecological footprints and explain which student most likely lives in a highly developed country, but then describe how one of these four categories of ecological footprint can serve as an environmental indicator. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful, subscribe for future APES video updates, and check out other notes over here to the side. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.